Good morning, everyone. The mass intention for today is Don, Ron, and Marquita Hansel. In addition, today being the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we also celebrate Respect Life Sunday. We celebrate and affirm that God is the author and creator of all life, and that each of us is called to build up a culture of life each and every day. There will be a special collection right after the first collection for Hurricane Irma emergency relief. We are called to discern God's will in our lives and to follow it. And today's gospel parable will challenge us to rethink what God requires of us. In today's psalm, we ask the Lord to teach us the way so that both our words and our lives say yes to God. All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment. For we have sinned against you and not obeyed your commandments. But give glory to your name and deal with us according to the bounty of your mercy. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to so celebrate the sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done 
in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite forward all little children that are ages three to first grade for the Liturgy of the Word. All right, before I send you guys with, go with a little blessing, I have one question for you guys. It's a really tough one, too. Who does Jesus love? Us. Us, yeah, that's the right answer. Very good. You get an A today, all right? All right, Heavenly Father, we ask you to pour out your blessings upon these kids as they encounter you in sacred scriptures. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, the, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is not fair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, 
It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sin he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of self selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, You did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. I really love the second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. And a little background on this letter, Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians in the early 50s of the first century probably about 20 years or so after the death and resurrection of Jesus. So it's a very early text, and it's important to note that all the letters of St. Paul were written before the Gospels. So these texts that we have from St. Paul are the earliest that we have. It's interesting because scholars think that this section of the letter that we're looking at today was Paul's adaptation of a hymn or a liturgical prayer one that was heard in Christian circles as a hymn of praise. So we have this this famous hymn from the second chapter of St. Paul to the Philippians, which contains one of the most illuminating summaries of the Christian Gospels that we have. So Paul says in regard to Jesus, Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped though he was in the form of God. Nobody in Jewish tradition would have had referred to Jesus as being in the form of God. Maybe spokesperson of God or representative of God, sure, but clearly not in the form of God. And it's because this claim would have rubbed first century Jews the wrong way. But Paul boldly proclaims Jesus in the form of God. We have this first century Jew but also in the form of God. So what do we hear about this man who is in the form of God? Well, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped. If you think about it, this little line is very powerful. and It sums up all of our spirituality and all of our morality. Because the fundamental problem with us 
is that we grasp at divinity. We try to make ourselves like God. It's Adam's sin, it's your sin, and it's my sin too. But what does it mean to grasp at divinity and try to make ourselves like God? It means that I decide what is right and what is wrong. I am the center of the universe and everything revolves around me. And this is why in the gospel, Jesus tells us that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God. Yes, of course, we have a merciful God, but more so because these sinners have encountered Christ and they found in him what they have been previously looking for in sin. So why do we sin? Well, first off, we sin because it makes us feel alive. And also, we get a little taste of what it feels like to be in control. And if you think about it, deep down, all of us sinners think we are God to a degree. But Jesus Christ is the one alone who can grasp at divinity, the one who who has the form of God, but he doesn't. He's that person who could say, yes, I am the center of the universe, but he doesn't. He doesn't grasp at godliness, but he rather he lets it go. So that little sentence is very packed with meaning. And honestly, we could spend the rest of our lives praying and attempting to unpack it. Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. This is the whole purpose of Christianity. God himself didn't grasp at godliness, so how come we are doing it? That is the problem. St. Paul continues, Christ emptied himself and he took the form of a slave. So while Jesus didn't grasp at divinity, he even humbled himself to take on the form of a slave. So we have a true God who prefers service even slavery. And St. Paul wrote about slavery in a time when his audience knew exactly what he meant. They knew what it meant to belong to someone else. And this is the great irony in Jesus Christ. He accepts slavery and he took the form of a slave. The Greek term being used here for this emptying out is the word kenosis. It means a pouring forth of oneself. But for us sinners, we always try to fill ourselves up. We have this emptiness within us that we want to fill up with the goods of the world. That's why we are not happy. I'm missing these things. It could be wealth, power, fame, all these things that other people have. The real truth of our faith is that God isn't about filling us up but rather emptying oneself out or pouring oneself out. When we sin, we grasp for, some, for something that is not ours in our, in our attempt to fill ourselves up. But Jesus is not calling us to grasp for these worldly allures, but rather to look within ourselves to see all that we have been given and to pour out ourselves. In not grasping for what is ours, and pouring ourselves out for our brothers and sisters in Christ, there is where we encounter Christ and truly can be happy in our daily life. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God.
trusting in our Lord's loving mercy for us, let us bring our needs now before our Heavenly Father. For Archbishop Hebda and all men and women who serve in leadership in the Archdiocese, that they may be channels of God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, that God will give them wisdom to work together to protect the earth, water, and air, so that the use of these elements may benefit us and future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women and men suffering after abortion, that God grant them courage to seek healing through the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our young people who are in religious education, may the Spirit open them to learn about their Catholic identity and teach them to follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here in this celebration of the Eucharist, that we may not merely speak of God's ways, but commit to live them as faithful disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those with broken hearts, broken bodies, and broken spirits, may they find comfort in God's limitless compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cecilia Bell, Shirley St. Martin, Harold Lamberty, Leonard Smezik, Rilla O'Neill, Dorothy Morris, Amber Van Orso, and all others who have recently died. May they be welcomed into the new life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Immediately following the first collection, there will be a second collection for the relief efforts and for the victims of Hurricane Irma. Heavenly Father, we ask that we may always pour ourselves out like you did on the cross. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this offering, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, to, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and the apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damon, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. This bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you into their company, now weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come <coughs> on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, you take away the sin. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> may this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We will have an animal blessing in honor of the Feast of St. Francis, which is on Wednesday, and this blessing will take place this afternoon at 3 p.m. here in the church parking lot. Cats, dogs, sheep, calves, chicken, birds, seeing eye dogs, therapy dogs, any critter is welcome. 
I'm always a little leery about the snakes, but Father Kevin said we can bless those. So there will be a CCW meeting this Monday, October 2nd at 6.15 in the evening in the St. Faustina Commons. So training for the new altar servers will be held on Saturday, October 14th, with an alternate session being offered on Monday, October 16th. Anyone who is 10 years old or older is invited to attend. We also need adult servers for the daily masses. So current altar servers are encouraged to attend one of the sessions for some fine tuning. See the bulletin for more information. We are looking for additional older teens or adults to join our video ministry. This group is responsible for recording one mass each weekend. Training will be provided. See Claire Marvin after mass or contact the parish office if you are interested. Then in remembrance of the 100th anniversary of Fatima, there will be a public rosary on Saturday, October 14th at noon in Central Park. For more information, contact Marion McHugo. Thank you for coming out to Mass today, and I wish you a blessed rest of your Sunday with family and friends. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.